Hello, welcome to Frank's School. Uh, 80th day of the fifth year, I'm going on with my imaginary movie, uh, Resurrection, uh, the movie, and this is the 14th shot at it. And I wanna, I, I've stopped in telling the story. Uh, I gave it some context last time. Now I wanna talk about the support structure. How could you actually, how could I, or how could someone actually make such a movie? How, how, how do you do it? Uh, oh, well, let me jump back to this. I forgot to mention the Back to the Land, Back to the Landers, Back to the Land movement. That's something that has arisen different times over the last couple hundred years. In the 30s, in that movie, Our Daily Bread, around that time, there was, a, with the Great Depression, there was a Back to the Land uh, uh, movement to, to get away from the cities, get back to the land. It was very strong in the 60s. Um, I think it surfaced again briefly in the 40s. Uh, so I should have mentioned that uh, as part of the context of what I'm doing. This is back to the land for certain. Uh, now, this could not be a low budget movie. <clears throat> I, I just, I, I think it would be uh, in vain uh, if you made this movie any way but great, uh, brilliant. Uh, there'd be danger there. So how in the world do you do it? <clears throat> Where's the money come from? No idea. Crowdfunding, you know, that's a new thing. I don't have a lot of belief in it because I, I suppose it could happen, but I, I don't pay that much on it. But there, there is support structure that I should talk about. For one thing, woofers. Worldwide, I've got it right now, world, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. These volunteers that go and they work for their keep, for their food and lodging, for, uh, no, they, they're not paid. They work on organic farms. I had thought about, I'd even at one point thought maybe I should call this movie Woof, uh, Worldwide Hand Workers on Organic Farms, because this isn't just about gardening. and uh, This is about using the hands, uh, very much about using the hands. Uh, well, there's thousands of them. And uh, I, sub I think they could be tapped so that as this aldea was restored, it wouldn't only be done by these uh, seven characters. As I say, that's idealistic, uh, in any case, unrealistic. But you could have a small army of woofers that were there, that were doing the gardening and, 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 and doing the work to make it all happen within the course of a year. Uh, permaculture is another uh, worldwide uh, movement. There, there was even a movie made uh, devoted to permaculture, but it was a documentary. Uh, that's not, but I've thought about contacting the couple, I think it was, that made that movie, uh, because they, they probably have some expertise, which I do not. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is this series, Der Letzte Zanestandes. Now that's German for the last of his uh, trade. Uh, on YouTube. Now, even though that's German and the videos are in German, if you would look at them, you would see that many examples of how in, in Germany, not always Germany, other places too, people still use their hands to make things and it's film footage of it. And, uh, uh, you know, I've even thought that as it goes in, I, as I go on to the story and there's not only the Schistu, or not only the aldea will be restored, there's gonna be so much handwork that needs to be filmed, details of hands making things. Uh, <clears throat> those hands would not have to always be the same set of hands. They could actually jump all around the world to find skilled hand workers. For, to understand this, I maybe, uh, I, I, this is a little bit ahead of, of my story, but, but uh, there are hands that still can do these things. Uh, Although, you know, it, this is sort of a bummer. It's the last. They're, they're disappearing, proposes this. Uh, I'd even thought that, you know, this movie will be wordless, so you don't need to worry about a translation. There's no words to translate. But it could be transfigured. In other words, it could, you could take the score <clears throat> and completely change the setting uh, to a different part of the world, and the characters as well. Just use the same score, same story just in different places. Portugal is not the only place that's available for this. I wouldn't be surprised if parts of Italy, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, and whew, I'm sure, I hope, in, in India and China, you could, you could place, find 
Africa. <laughs> I even thought, could you do this in cat fight? Hey, cat. Uh, uh, you, could you do it in the United States in a, uh, in a city? Uh, that would be tricky. But anyway, uh, it, Portugal is not the only one. But I happen to know Portugal well, fairly well. And, and, and uh, Portugal has some advantages. There are these aldeias abandonadas. There are these abandoned villages. And since they're built out of stone, the walls are still there. They need roofs. Uh, and there are the terraces. This isn't the... Cosalco? I, I don't know. I've, I have to find the word again. There, there is a particular word in Portuguese for these terraces that are there. Now, they're the work of hundreds of years. Uh, from 800 years before, you know, so in a sense, the support structure, you could say the movie was started 800 years ago because the, the laying up of those stones and the building of those terraces, they're there, and so many of them have also been abandoned, but they're there to be restored. Portugal is not the only place. Um, uh, it, Portugal also, it's going to bother me, I lost that word at the moment, but... Uh, there are weekly markets, not many, but in Portugal. Uh, there are these weekly markets, and Arganil is the one that I filmed, and, and we, we got there as it was ending. Uh, they are an important factor. <laughs> Mountain bikers. I actually have, uh, on Facebook, I have a friend who has a bunch of friends who continually ride their mountain bikes through these parts of, of Portugal. Uh, and, uh, I mean, they are... Uh, he, whether he thinks of himself that way or not, I'm sure he is very expert in knowing these, uh, this area, these aldeas. Uh, the film industry of Portugal, I don't know very much about it. I did contact, and he actually wrote back to me, João Mario Grillo. Uh, he's the one who uh, did the movie um, O Fim do Mundo, The End of the World. And that's one of the things that got me really going on thinking a movie is needed. Um, uh, but I imagine that Portugal probably has a budding film industry. So many parts of the world do. And, and I've suggested elsewhere, I just can't, it's very difficult for me to imagine how this could be made uh, in America or by an American film industry or, or maybe an English one, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but they do, this, this man teaches filmology. Uh, so, you know, and, and I did see the movie uh, O Nosso Querido Mês de Agosto, Our Beloved Month of August, uh, the only Portuguese movie I've actually seen, and it's set right in the area of Arganil. Uh, I well, didn't care for it that much. I was a little disappointed, to tell you the truth. But, but I see that, well, yeah, they, they, they make movies, and this won some awards. Galicia is also uh, in the, the whole area, and Chaussée's Mill, which is in Galicia, it wouldn't be hard to, to bring those together. And I'm also, I have a friend who lives in Santiago de Compostelo, that, well, Chaussée, and he, uh, I'm going to ask him if there's any kind of Galician film industry. Uh, but these would be small, which doesn't mean they wouldn't be great. They'd be small, but this is not going to be low budget. This, it's, the only way I can imagine is that this would take a, a, a not, not a huge budget, but this couldn't be done cheaply. I think what I really need is a penitent director, somebody like George Lucas. A penitent, because he's made so much money over uh, with f films about blowing things up and, exp and shooting and zooming and fighting in war. Uh, and now go another way. Or the best example would be Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I mean, shamelessly violent, to the extent that I think you're supposed to think, oh, you don't take it serious, it's a joke. Uh, guts flying everywhere and blood. And They would have the money, they would have the expertise, and if there were somebody like that, Zeffirelli would be wonderful. <laughs> Not that he has to be penitent, but he, he's, he's 92 years old, and but boy, his work. And then finally, I did want to say about the schedule. I'm going to stay right on this now. I think every day I'm going to add to this until I'm done for another week or two. Because I believe myself when I say this is urgently needed.
there's a U.S. election coming up here, and there's some chance that uh, that Donald Trump could end up being uh, the American president. It's just almost unthinkable because he is so far away from understanding uh, a different a different view, and there is so much power concentrated within the United States. It's just terrifying in a way to think about that. No, but it can't be done. It, it can't be done before that. I, I just don't see. But I will talk about the schedule. So how do you go about doing such a movie? Well, I think tomorrow I'm going to go back to the plot. Bye for now.